Welcome back to our video module on statics. I'd like to talk today about something that I, um, I experience actually every now and again. So I'm learning to sail and um, you know I sailed when I was a kid but I'm really kind of trying to figure it out for good right now and one of the things that we do is we'll, we'll pull in the sails um, based on how much wind we're getting and our headings that type of thing and so what we use a lot of times is on smaller rigs we'll, we'll pull on the, the rope we have this rope attached to the to the sail here. Let me let me find a picture for you. Uh, there's pictures of winches here. Here we go. Here this top one. You can see that there's this this line. It kind of goes through here, and it will attach to one of the uh, sails. And it, it's a way we can control it. But a lot of times, if we need to control that sail, say the wind's blowing really strong, there's so much force going through that sail. We can't pull on the rope. Like we're not. I, I, well, maybe other people can, but I'm just not strong enough. So what we have on the boats are these these items, these winches right here. And what I can do is I take the rope and I wrap it around the winch and I and I and I pull on it. And the winch is kind of set up that if I pull on it and it tightens, the winch turns. But if it tries to loosen, the winch won't turn. And the only thing keeping the rope from just spinning out of my hands is the friction between the rope and we call this thing the capstan the rope and the capstan. Now I want you to notice something. This is wrapped around the capstan twice. See it's gone around once, twice here. However, sometimes if I wrap it around twice, there's still too much force for me to be able to control, so I wrap it around a third time. Like this. Here's the our larger picture is right here and you can you can see the knurling and the uh, or the the funky finish on the metal so that gives it some more friction. You can see that we wrap it around a third time. Now why is it that wrapping the rope around a capstan an additional time allows me to be able to hold more tension in this line? I don't have to pull as hard here to be able to keep the same amount of tension in this line. The real question is what goes on with a capstan and friction? What I'd like to take this moment to do is to show you one of the neatest equations and one of the neatest relationships I think is out there. Um, and that is this. If we have some sort of um, round object like this, and we have a, a cable coming in, okay? That cable goes around, comes back out like this, and you can see that the cable is engaged for some amount of angle, say 30 degrees. We'll say that right here we have a high force. We'll call it force high. So there's a lot of force right here. And then we're going to hold on to the bottom with some lower force, force low. And along this area, some amount of force of friction is going to be occurring. Something's happening there and we're not going to trouble ourselves with exactly what's happening right now. But what we will say is that there's some sort of force of friction and that's influ and that's kind of that's basically that force of friction is allowing one side to have a really low tension, one side to have a really high tension. And that force of friction if you can figure this out is going to go in this direction. It's going to fight the direction of motion. Now that said, I'm going to give you an equation that relates the force of high and the force of low. It's a ratio. And it is equal to E to the coefficient of friction times the angle subtended. It's not times the angle that everything is going. E to the mu theta. Or another way to say this is we could take the natural log of both sides and we get the natural log of force high to force low equals mu theta. Now one of when I first learned this my professor uh, showed me this and I was I was absolutely fascinated and uh, he said, okay, now now you know this, go ahead and derive it. And it's, it's a really neat experience deriving. You want to start, if you feel compelled to do this, it's a great exercise. Go ahead and just take a little section right here and draw all the forces that are happening. 
and you're going to find you're able to make some approximations. Um, that said, I wanted to, I just want to show you this equation, show you that um, when you're dealing with cables going around the the center areas, we call this like a, a cable and a capstan. This is the equation we follow, and now you can see what's happening when I sail. When I sail, this force high is getting really, really, really high, which means this ratio, the mu staying the same, right? That's going to stay the same, which means I either need to pull when that gust of wind comes, I either need to pull with a huge force here. I need to increase my force to keep it from um, pulling, pulling out of my hands, or I increase my theta. And if I increase my theta, let's say I went from two to three, let's say I went from two to three wraps, let's run what that would be. Let's say, uh, let's say E squared to E cubed. Let's figure out what type of percentage difference that is. All right, a little calculator shows me that uh, E, why, why is this giving me some grief? There we go. E squared is 7.4. E cubed is 20.1. So what that tells me is that by adding those two, um, or by adding that additional rope around, I am increasing the amount, oh right, I should have known this, I'm increasing the magnitude of the uh, my, the force I'm able to fight by 2.7, I'm basically adding in another E. So we've been able to multiply our low force, what we're capable, or the high force, what we're capable of pulling on the high by 2.7. Um, this is a great equation to know, a great equation to use because you'll see this a good bit of time. Thanks and I look forward to seeing you on our next module.